Well, first I'd like to say what Walls Watershed Coalition would rather be doing is stuff like what Ashley just talked about. Walls is assisting with that outing. We also have outings coming up in the next few months on the Upper Swanee River upstream from your proposed pipeline location and at, in the uh, Okefenokee Swamp. And we also do cleanups. We did one last weekend on the Alapaha River and we'll be doing another one just before the kayaktivism day. But instead, we have to deal with this sort of thing. And I want to mention a few things that you know, but the audience may not. Um, following up on this stuff about emergent, FERC itself is actually not tax funded. It is 100% funded by fees and charges to the very same industries they supposedly regulate. And you can easily verify this, go look on their website, go look at their annual reports to Congress, they call it full cost recovery, is it total cost recovery, one of those. Just look at their annual budget request to Congress. So you've got, um, you know, where did this DEIS come from? It came from a contractor who's apparently paid by the pipeline companies. It came from FERC who's apparently paid by the pipeline companies. And for that matter, where's Sable Trail? I don't see Sable Trail here. Instead, FERC is acting for Sable Trail. Just like FERC acts for Sable Trail when you try to get any of those documents marked as critical energy um, infrastructure, information infrastructure. Infrastructure information, yes, there we go. So who is actually acting for us? Now, this is really, a, this is not a speculative question because other people have been through this whole FERC process and uh, there was a case where they delayed a pipeline 18 months and they got their whole local congressional delegation, they got all their local governments to say they didn't want the pipeline. And then some Congress people from somewhere else said, ignore all this localized opposition and approve the pipeline. And FERC did. This is why there, for the last three weeks there were people camped out on FERC's doorstep doing a fast for three weeks. Because many of these people had been through this. And also some of those people have been through, they had gone to the FERC commission meetings to exercise their First Amendment rights to petition the government for a redress of grievances. They were removed from the room, they were arrested. They were also told they could not video despite FERC's own rule saying that they could. Of the people that were arrested, the only case I've seen that came to court, the judge threw it out saying, this is obviously First Amendment. So why is FERC throwing people out for exercising their First Amendment rights to, pro to you know, petition their government for a redress of grievances for a very, very flawed process? Now, you know, I believe John Piconum is you know, a well-meaning, hard-working person who's trying to do a good job. That's not the issue. The issue is the process is as some of the landowners said last night in Moultrie, a farce, a hoax. This is not a real process. Yes, they will write down what you say. They will produce an even longer environmental impact statement. And then unless we stop it somehow, they will approve this pipeline. But that doesn't mean the pipeline's gonna happen because it took me three months to get this information, but it turns out FERC has actually denied two pipelines before. And one of them was proposed by Spectra Energy. Even mighty Spectra can lose at FERC. And you've all heard about the Keystone XL pipeline. Well, it seems that even mighty Trans Canada, which by the way competes for Spectra in British Columbia for natural gas pipelines to export at the British Columbia coast. Anyway, mighty Trans Canada just admitted they can't go around the Nebraska government. They have to go through the Nebraska Public Service Commission. And uh, you probably heard that even Shell Oil finally admitted they can't get any results out of drilling in the Arctic. Now, some people say that this pipeline is different because Sable Trail is already paying people for easements. And they say, well, it has to pay millions of dollars. Well, 
Shell wasted $7 billion before they gave up on Arctic drilling. And my point is, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I'm Thank sorry, you, I didn't repeat that part.